got two. So we're here at the uh, STRXON, you have HSPA Plus Solutions. Hi there, my name is Michael. Yes, in front of us you see the second generation of our 21 megabit modem solutions. This is actually a two chip solution and this is now integrated in the world's very first 21 megabit uh, smartphone. Uh, the Galaxy 4G from uh, uh, T-Mobile and Samsung. Alright, so what is in here? How does it work? What's in here? What you see in front of, in front of us here is fundamentally uh, the, the modem is a very small cavity here in a half size mini PCI Express form factor and actually the bearer behind is just a board to get the signaling out in a standard USB connector. So the demo use case we are viewing here is fundamentally a streaming use case. So here on the second floor we have a HD video camera uh, showing a nice image of uh, the FIRA area. Uh, this is then connected to uh, uh, the backbone of our live network and actually we stream it back, we have a base station behind the walls over there and then we stream it using our modem technology, the 5730 uh, and that's what you view on the screen. So, so is it, uh, is it uh, uploading this video from the roof, something like that? or? Yeah, well, the, the video camera itself uh, is connected to the backbone, to the core network okay. and then it's actually streamed in real time. Down over the modem connection. So it's a download uh, demo. Yeah, it's in real time. So if you go if you go upstairs and watch the window outside, it will look exactly the same. Oh, I nice. can go out and jump on the street. If you and want it to. can go up to 21 megabit per second. That's the standard. Absolutely, that's the standard. So in a single cell for HSPA Plus, uh, it allows communication up to 21 megabit per second. However, here and today we have five different demonstrations using the cell. So uh, I can, but uh, if I do that, uh, people in the other side will scream because their demos will. The, the way it works a little bit is that the base stations are shared by the number of people that are there, right? Absolutely. So. So for each cell, it's, uh, it's up to 21 megabits per second, and then depending on, on the cell planning and how many cells you have, uh, you have more than one cell at one location, yeah. of course, uh, th that will, of course, uh, the number of users have to share that capacity. Absolutely. How many of these cells might there be, for example, around mobile work congress, let's say? It could be like 20 or 10 or 5? You, sh or you should better go and ask Ericsson about okay. that. I'm, I'm not really the infrastructure guy, so, so uh, I would appreciate that. And here there are two antennas? Yeah. It's needed to have two antennas? Is that a new thing? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, w w what this is about is actually uh, called RX diversity. So it means that you have two receiver paths. You have one main antenna and then you have an auxiliary antenna helping out to uh, uh, sort out the kind of interference constraints you have in the surrounding. So that's in, in, in basically improving your performance in the solution. Alright, so basically this part here, right here, is going into this phone. Yeah. Behind their motherboard or integrated with their motherboard or... Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, it, this modem, so, I mean, what you see in front of us here is the reference yeah. design. And we are doing the reference design just to make sure that our customers uh, uh, can, can uh, start with something that is well proven. We have tested the solution and put the chips close together to be as realistic as possible for the final application. And then we are doing IoT and, and interoperability testing in all major network configurations in the world. And. Uh what exactly are those processors and do they, for example, if you make a better one, does it help in connecting faster to the internet or like, like a connection, you know, like startup speed or something like that? Uh, you mean from a modem perspective or from, yeah. I think from a modem perspective, of course, there are, diff there are a lot of different bottlenecks you can end up in. You can have yeah. bottlenecks in the technology as such that you don't support the latest and greatest uh, uh, modulation schemes. In this case, to get the, 60, to the full 21 megabit uh, up download speed, you will need a 64 QA modulation scheme. And, and uh, we are one of the very first providing that and the very first phone uh, um, for 21 megabits. So I think that's, that's the really exciting thing. And I think the, the very nice thing is that we combine this uh, high speed download with uh, what we believe is a very competitive power consumption. Because as you know, in a smartphone, everything is about user experience. And, and, uh, and the power you would like to use for that and not necessarily to put everything into the modem domain. And we believe that one, we are one of the absolute best in providing low power solutions. So high speed for lowest power consumption. Absolutely, you're right. And good value price proposition. That's, 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 that's our view of the world at least for right okay. now, yes. Thanks. So, so this is the board again, that's how it looks. Yes, exactly. So this is the this is actually the footprint of the 21 megabit modem, and um, actually also includes a GPS that you can see in between of the antenna connectors up there. All right, and uh, are you showing some other things here? Yeah, our typical uh, products uh, from, uh, from different vendors, actually putting um, uh, modules inside by partners uh, and, and customers of ours like Ericsson. 
they are doing uh, 21 megabits uh, modules uh, using our M570 product inside. And as you can see, it ends up in uh, uh, laptops like this uh, Nevo uh, Lenovo laptops, and we have routers in this case, an example from Netgear. So there's a Netgear with built in. We we'll built in um, a 21 megabit mode. And a SIM yeah, card reader, you just put a SIM and that's it. Yeah, the SIM card on the back. Uh, so this is, uh, you can see the is it like, a, could we consider uh, like a backup network just in case or something? Yeah, absolutely. I, I would say that uh, even uh, many people would consider it as the main uh, internet connection at home. All right. And uh, so what is the next tour? What's going to happen there? What is going to happen here is that, I mean, now we have uh, reviewed our portfolio, our family of uh, 21 megabit solutions. Yes. Here, we go to the next generation, which is actually uh, uh, sampling uh, now this spring. And um, what happens here is that we move from 21 megabit up to 84 megabit per second. Hey, what do you say? Family. 84 megabits per second in this product family. So what we are doing here is really that uh, when we when we viewed the LT was upcoming, we really looked into to our architecture, and uh, we would like to uh, target for the mass market immediately. And as you can see, the footprint of this new uh, product line is extremely small for this multi-mode capabilities. Are those two just swift? It is the same. Down? It is the same board. It's just to share with you how they look uh, on uh, each of the sides of the board. This is the first time you show Tor. This is the first time we introduced Tor at uh, the Barcelona here. Yeah. So f to achieve the 84 uh, megabit per second, uh, the carrier has to support that kind of thing. Of course, I mean this is a combination of a network capability and a modem capability for sure. Yeah. And uh, who's designing that actually? Who's standardizing that? Is ST Ericsson part of the? the ST Ericsson is very active in, in in that standardization. It's actually the standardization itself is done inside 3GPP. All right. Standardization body. And this is uh, soon. Available? Absolutely. I mean, uh, we are expecting the first incarnations, uh, I mean, uh, end of this year, beginning of next year. Absolutely. All right.